we're gonna look at taking the ladle out. Right bowl, the ladle will be right here. Okay, wood. Let's head to the shop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this. So we're looking at the ladle being right in here. So we're gonna try. So now the question is can we split this and that is going to be a bit more of a trick I do believe. Oh, she's going to split the wrong way. See I want it to split the other way. Otherwise we're going to have to pass through the core of that and I didn't want to do that. I figured by starting way off center that it would go my way. It chose not to. Well, let's see if we got enough meat there to save a handle out of it. So, let's get rid of that and switch tools. Not we'll have to go hunt another piece of wood, huh? And the other question is how long a handle we need on this. Right here is where our limb comes in. See the center of the limb right there? Yeah. So what we want to do is we kind of work our way down in here and get rid of that back half of that limb. And I don't know, I split out there kind of bad, but I think I got enough wood there to maintain a handle. We'll see. If not, there's more trees down there. And you can see the funky grain here, the, where the limb joins the tree. Okay. That's what we're getting into, that really wild, really wild grain there. And what we want to do is kind of get underneath that to where we get back into flatter grain. That's where I'm headed to get back into where we kind of split off that crazy grain. Now we still got center here. That center of limb, center of the tree is gone the trunk of the tree. We're past it. Now the question is, can we get behind that? That's our next question. We're not in what we want for wood just yet. What we want is now we're getting to it. This stuff seems pretty rubbery. But it's just green and I'm wailing on it pretty hard. Once it dries out, it'll go up stiffer. Yeah, see, I think we're going to be just fine. Got to get that little bit of core running right through here. See where that's thick? This thickness right here, we want to thin that down a little bit more. We want to move our handle over so all of our handles on the side pass have 
having to center the tree out in that handle probably wouldn't cause any major issues. I figure if I can prevent an issue, now's the time to do it. So see, we're getting down here. We've got something we can work with. So there's the core in our limb right here we want to get just underneath that basically is where we want to be with the time we're done so we're gonna be all right got a little head of myself to start with but I think we reeled it back in we'll be okay so there's kind of our basic profile and we're gonna have the bowl of our ladle right out here in front you can see we still got a little work to do everywhere but still got a lot of kind of nasty grain here so that tree gets pretty convoluted where those limbs come off because it's got to be strong and so the tree makes it strong by interlacing its grain See now I've kind of got things tapered in here a little bit. I need a little more off of this side. But we're getting fairly close to where we can kind of start to shift gears. Start looking at a bowl of the ladle and uh, kind of get away from the coarse hack and beating on the, with the attics. And it's, it's walnut, but it was a young walnut tree, so we may have just a little bit of color at the bottom of our ladle. It's probably about all we're going to get realistically out of this. That's okay. And I'm just going to kind of follow that contour, that center of that limb there. My handle's going to be a little funky, and I'm fine with that. So now I'm going to go in, clean this off, and uh, kind of get ready to do the bowl of the ladle in here. And once we have the bowl hollowed out with a spoon knife, then we'll be able to go back in and work it the other way. This is going to be a outside-in ladle, and you can see right here in the end the you know the outer bark of the tree and the kind of the inner bark and the cambium layers right underneath that inner bark. This is going to be kind of, kind of hard to get to with my axe, actually. So I'm probably going to go after this with a knife a little bit here. Cheap knife. It's still one of the best knives there is. What kind of knife is it? It's a Mora. Just a carbon steel Mora. They're, you know, $15, $20 knife on the internet. At least when there's not an apocalypse going on, they are. And you just switch to that because this is kind of a rough... Yeah. I'm just... What I'm doing right now, basically, in all honesty, is I'm just debarking this so I can kind of see what I have for wood. The bark on a walnut tree is really thick. And, uh, I mean, you get an idea from that when you look at some of this. Even out here on the limb, it's the bark is quite thick. We just kind of want to get down to wood here. So we kind of have an idea of what we have to work with is what I'm after. And that yellow, the more that's exposed to the air here, that'll oxidize and all that inner bark will turn real bright yellow for a little while. Well, it's getting rid of its moisture. And I'm not really shaping anything right now, I'm more just peeling. I'm just kind of getting that bark off so I can look at this and say, okay, this is the wood I have to work with. Now what am I going to make out of it? This bark right in here is going to be, see how thick that is? I mean, that there is almost three-eighths of an inch, the outer bark, and then you got a thick inner layer 
things, and that's how it's going to be. Bark's real coarse in here in the joint of the tree. So I'm just going to kind of, and that's why I chose a big knife. So I kind of go in here and be a little rough on things. And here in this joint but you can see that it's see how wavy the bark is in there and things the bark's just as convoluted as the wood that's what makes that joint strong between the limb and the tree it's all that convolution of that grain and actually when this dries out and put some oil on it'll be kind of pretty have a little bit of figure in there hard to get hold of and work down here but we're getting there so there we've got it pretty well skinned we got a little bit of inner bark out here but not a whole lot and we can kind of see what we've got so um, we got plenty of wood here for the elbow joint and our grain follows, so it's really strong. It's not like it's cross grain, like we'd saw in this out of a block of wood. So this grain follows, so it's really strong. So I'm gonna grab my ads and go in here and kind of level this off, because it's the easiest tool to do that with. So I'm just trying to kind of level this off. And you can see the wrinkles in that grain in there. See that? Even through my ads cuts there, it kind of shows up. This curved ads just allows me to cut across that grain real easy. And uh, really get down to what I want to get down to really quick. Could not get in there. Let me do what I wanted to do. So, because it's going to be a ladle, we're not going to have a real long front end on here. I've got extra wood. I just kind of cut that on there to kind of see where I was. I'm going to move it out just a little bit. I'm looking at my bowl probably being about right here. And then we'll work this in a little bit back here as we kind of kind of get there. I'm going to go back after that just a little bit. Working across that grain, just nice shearing motion there. Just a nice way to kind of get things where I'm kind of getting that curve I want. I want that to thicken up a little bit as it gets into the bowl. It's probably still just a little heavy back here. Let's see if I can get a little off this side here. And it's just faster and easier to do it with the bigger tool there, the hand axe. So, we've kind of got our profile. Then we kind of know where our bowl is going to be. So, I'm going to narrow this up just a little bit more here where the handle comes in and then we're going to cut a bowl. Can we get that with this or not? I'm going to try. No, I'll have to go after it with a knife. Have a little... I don't have a dislike for going after it with a knife, but the axe is so fast. Usually you can get it. You just have to kind of figure out how you're going to do it. kind of beaten down on this handle and it's not real stiff so I can only take just so heavy a cut here right now. Kind of 
So now we've kind of got that, got that in a little bit down to where we can kind of work that with a knife here when we get done. So now we're going to put our bowl in here. I think I might just take a little more off this end. I'm going to have a little, just a little bigger bowl maybe than I thought I would there, actually. It's going to work out a little better than I thought. So we'll just go ahead and clean that off. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take a little more off to get rid of this edge here. So I got basically where the bowl is going to be is can be full width of the material I have. I've got that. You can see I'm pretty much down to where my edge is. Are kind of into what I have for wood here to work with. So now what we're going to do is grab our spoon knife and we're going to go in here. I don't know, I'm going to try to get a little of this with the ads and uh, speed it up a little bit if I can. You just have to be careful with the ads. You don't get a strike out here at the edge. Uh, when you're on a big bowl or something where you got a, more wood to work with, it's not as big a deal. But on this, I have a real finite wood supply here, so I kind of have to make sure I don't really mess up. 